anyone who follows you on social media will see that you know your diet and how you've been really taking it seriously the last year or so in particular. Is that something like you say you don't want to be too too light for this one? He's going to be could be twenty stone on the night. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be heavy. Yeah, I mean I, I want to be functional, but I don't want to be too light. I want to be able to rip punches with enough power and speed and movement and fitness. But, you know, I don't want to be... Normally, I'm trying to strip down and come into 17 and a half, 17, 4, 17, 2, 17, 6. But this time, I want to be top end of 17, maybe 18 stone. I reckon that's functional enough for me. Um, and I'll be fit enough to carry that as well. Considering how far you've come since the AJ defeat and the, the surgery yeah. you had, is this make or break now, do you think, against Lucas Brown? And what's at stake? And what, what happens if you win this fight? Every fight's a make or break for me. Because if I don't win them, then... <laughs> I go back, I go back and back and back. So this, this fight is a good fight. It's it's a it's a meaningful fight. It's a proper fight, and it's one that I progress from. I win and I progress, and then I can start screaming real titles. Then then no one can deny me. Then you know, so it's a very important fight. It's probably I'll say it's probably the most important fight in my career to date. You think just because yeah. of what it opens up if you win? It for yeah. one, it's my my first headline fight as the home fighter. Mm. So, you know, that's the most important thing, really. You know, there's a lot of things looming in the background, there's a lot of things, but I'm trying not to focus and I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see what's here in Russell right now. You know, so it's a bit difficult doing that because you know what's at stake, but I'm just trying to be locked in and that and focus on that. You had this, it was, well, you were supposed to have a headline at the O2 against mm. Marius Wack, and obviously that fell through. Yeah. Does it feel like. You know, this is your your big chance. After that one went by the wayside, yeah. you've got an opportunity here we, in a big month for heavyweights, yeah. right in the middle of it, to really make a statement in a big fight. Yeah, yeah of course. You know, I mean, O2 is my hometown. Yeah. I, I want to be able to to have big fights and headline fights. There, you know, what I mean, I had a good one there last time, but I lost it. I want to be the dominant fighter there and just be selling out the whole two and having big dominant fights there and having all the press and everything around it at the whole two. You know, what I mean, how good it be. Brixton guy constantly headlining the whole two, being a, you know, it is it, 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 a short term goal for me, you know, and it, it's good that I'm closer to it and I'm very, very close to achieving it. How much do you think you learned from that Joshua fight? I learned, I learned a lot, I learned everything because I realised that I need to change my whole career. Alright, no all good. See you later. Cheers. I need to change my whole career and change my approach and everything, so yeah. Did you you know? change everything from that, from the, from the I changed bottom everything, up. I changed everything. Even, even trainer changed in the yeah. end, you know what I mean? Cause I had very good training in Jonathan Banks, so I never had enough time to work and learn what he was teaching me because he had Klitsch, Cole and other people that was in front of me, which is understandable because they was the, the champions, I was, I was coming up. So understandable, you know, I, mean, I never had enough time to learn and we never had enough time to work together. So now I changed to Mark, who's a very good trainer, very similar style to me. And we're working and stuff and improving stuff. Mark's had in other dimensions and other punches that I thought about throwing before he's getting me to throw them and other things, the movement, this and the other. So no, it's good, you know, it's really good. When you speak to Joshua these days and you talk about who he wants to fight, he always says he wants to fight you again. The feeling's mutual. Yeah. The feeling, we just want to fight each other, man, because Whenever we get in the ring, it's a good fight. You know, it's just, there's more to me in fighting than winning or losing our titles. It's just, we're passionate about beating the shit out of each other. Mm. You know, <laughs> it's as simple as that. We're passionate about trying to, help, trying to fight and hurt each other. You know what I mean? Now we're more respectful to each, each other. We're more growing up. We're more smart and we understand that this is a business as well, you know? And uh, there's more things to it than just, um, you know, so, so now, it, it, it's um now it's just saying um, now it just makes the fight more interesting and better. Can I have some sugar as well, please? Do you think that if you beat, if or when you beat uh, Lucas Brown, that you'll be next in line for Deontay Wilder? Is that how you or whoever wins that fight for that? Do you think you'll be the next in line for the WBC? Is that how you see it? It could out? be next in line for yeah. AJ as well. Yeah. You know, so there's lots of options, but I'm just trying not to think ahead. I'm trying to stay grounded. Is that hard focused. though? When you think about the, the sort of money you can make, the achievement that you it's can make. It's not hard because no. you, I've got a dangerous opponent in front of me. Mm. I haven't got a walk over in front of me. If it was a walk over, I'd be like, yeah, I don't care. I focus on that part. It's a dangerous opponent, former world champion, 25 and all. Dangerous guy, big puncher, 20 something stones, whatever it is. So it's a dangerous fight. So I have to stay focused on that. You know, one mishap or one mistake. And that could be it. that could be it, you know what I mean? Brown, Brown is confident and he believes in himself, so yeah. 
I remember think, uh, speaking to you after the Hellenius fight, and you, even though you won, you weren't particularly happy. You were quite annoyed with him. Yeah, because Hellenius sucked. Yeah. Hellenius sucked. He, he said he was going to come and knock me out and come and fight, and he didn't. But that's boxing. I don't blame these guys. No one wants to get hurt. You know what I mean? He's thinking, mate, I've got to pay my money. I'll go to I'll go points and then run off into the night and that's what he did you know he got paid his three hundred or four hundred grand or whatever he got paid you know went points he can say well I didn't get stopped I went points I can fight someone else but one thing I tell you is a very good boxer very good movement and awkward as hell six or eight I think he's probably one of the better boxers out there he's probably just lost a bit of winning ambition but his boxing ability and boxing skills are still there he was able to evade and move around the ring all night long. Sometimes he looked like he was ready to go, but you know, he was very tricky and he was very experienced and clever. Like, he, he would sit like he won a full punch, or he didn't. So, you know, I learned a lot from that fight, and I'm thankful to him. I learned a lot from that fight. I kept my temperament together, I didn't really go crazy, and I won. 10, I won 11 or uh, 10 rounds out of 12 rounds mm. against Elena, so he was top fight, been a top fighter for years. One of those last time anyone won a round against him, really. You know, he's knockout guys that that would steal chin, knock out Sam Peter, knock out Lemon Bruce, and knock out Sergei Lykovich while they was good fighters. So, you know, I learned a lot from that fight, I took a lot away from that fight. Do you think that Lucas Brown, in terms of style-wise, how, how he'll approach a fight would be sort of the exact opposite of how Hellenius did? And, the movement and well, he hasn't he he got the range, the size, out yeah. of boxing IQ, but he's got a bit of footwork. He tries to move around, there. he tries to run in with his big right hand, this that, and the other. But whenever guys fight me, they seem to find this new motivation, this new power, this new conditioning from wherever they find it from. So we'll see, mm. we'll see. You know, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, he comes to fight and do what he says he's gonna do. But I've learned from experience, never listen to what these guys say they're going to do, prepare. Because I prepare for Elenius coming forward and doing stuff and I had to go and chase him all night long. 